If you're watching this video, you have likely suffered from chronic pain and illness, possibly for years. Maybe it's not you, but instead it's someone you care about, a friend, a family member, or a coworker. You have likely gone through years of struggle with endless visits to doctors, psychotherapists, alternative practitioners, medication, supplements, and maybe even special diets. And even with all these efforts, there are no lasting results. Your condition perpetuates anyway. It's also likely that through your struggle, you're left with this deep-seated feeling that it's your fault somehow. You probably have thoughts like, maybe I'm not trying hard enough, or maybe there's something broken in me that no one can fix. And even loving friends and family can make you feel worse by saying things that are well-meant but not helpful, like, maybe you should think more positive, as if you hadn't thought of that, or a common New Age response to someone's illness, Maybe you should look at why you're attracting this to your life. These are horrible things to say to someone who is suffering. It's especially harmful because of the implied assumption that if doctors can't find anything wrong, it must be in your mind. People make the assumption that because it's in your mind, you should be able to consciously will yourself back to health by changing your thoughts. Therefore, if you're not healthy, it's because you don't want to be healthy. In contrast, modern neuroscience shows us that it's not in your mind, it's not your fault, and you're not broken. Your nervous system needs adjustment. I'll show you how to navigate your nervous system to get lasting results. Here are the main points that I will cover. The difference between the traditional scientific view of pain and the updated neuroscience. The new science tells us that chronic conditions are caused by a malfunction of your unconscious nervous system's response to stress. When the unconscious system becomes dysfunctional and unreliable, it interferes with healing. Now let's explore how to adjust this unconscious response system to support your health. Let's begin by looking at the traditional model of pain. The traditional scientific view explains that you feel pain because there's damage to your body. Therefore, you're going to feel pain only when you're injured. So as this illustration shows, you feel pain when you hit your thumb with a hammer. And the assumption from the traditional view is that the degree of pain you feel will be equal to how hard you hit your thumb. Therefore, the amount of pain you feel will equal the severity of your injury. Additionally, the traditional view tells us that we have pain receptors in our body and that these pain receptors are what send messages about the level of pain in our body to our brain, reporting how much damage exists in the thumb. Therefore, the model of the traditional view is that the amount of pain you feel will equal the amount of damage done. Damage equals pain level is the model that most of us learned in school. In contrast, the new scientific view explains that we have sensation sensors in our body, not pain receptors. These receptors collect information on things like temperature, pressure, movement, texture, etc. Then the data is sent to the unconscious part of your nervous system. Finally, the subconscious part of your nervous system decides how much pain to report to your brain based on its analysis of these sensations. Your subconscious decides how much pain to express based on things like past experiences, personal temperament, and genetics. This new model states that the pain level you feel equals the unconscious interpretation of damage instead of the amount of damage done. Therefore, the pain level you feel in any situation is somewhat arbitrary, especially if you have chronic issues. And by arbitrary, I mean that it isn't necessarily matching the reality of the situation. Because pain can be arbitrary, you can feel pain even when you're not injured. Here's another example of pain or discomfort. We would assume that this couple has either the flu or cold. We would assume this because of the body language, facial tissues, and red noses. In this case, most people would think, just like the hammer hitting the thumb, that there's an obvious reason why they feel bad. They feel bad because a virus, bacteria, or something toxic is raging through their bodies. Even though that seems logical, current neuroscience says this model is only accurate some of the time. The degree to which you feel discomfort from any given illness isn't necessarily tied to the actual severity of the illness. Essentially, you can feel sick even if you aren't sick. Now, at this point, you might say, wait a minute, Michael, come on. When I hit my finger with a hammer, it hurts. And when I have the flu, it feels terrible in the same way every time. 
Therefore, the traditional view of pain and illness must be correct. It matches my experience. And I understand that sometimes this model seems accurate. However, even without looking at scientific studies, your personal experience often contradicts the damage equals pain model. For example, think of how often you've hurt yourself, maybe even severely, and didn't realize it until hours or days later. And even if you haven't done that, you probably know someone who has, including one of your favorite sports heroes. There are many stories of athletes who play a game on a broken ankle or something similar and don't realize how serious they're injured until after the game. Have you ever wondered why that is? Other examples include symptoms that feel like the flu or cold, triggered by stress. Stressful events can also trigger skin rashes, hives, or sudden bouts of diarrhea. In fact, stress-induced symptoms can potentially mimic the symptoms of nearly every common disease, including heart attack, cancer, and stroke. Additionally, individuals can have dramatically different tolerances to the same stimulus, including hot or cold temperature, sound levels, and even social situations. For example, some people experience hot weather as pleasant, while others find it torturous. For some, nightclubs are exciting. They can't wait to party. Woohoo! while others can't stand the noise, the stink, the crowds. Ugh. One person is the life of the party. Woo! They don't know anyone, but they're famous by the time they leave. Others go to a party, get a drink, hide in the corner, and hope that no one notices them, and hopefully it'll be over soon. It's also noteworthy how common it is for people to get sick on vacation or on holidays, like Christmas. Finally, many soldiers are severely injured in battle, but don't stop fighting because they don't feel any pain. They only stop when the battle ends or someone notices that they're wounded and insists they get help from a medic. Then as soon as they're attended to and calm down a little, they're overwhelmed by pain. Interesting, huh? To explain how our unconscious sensory system works, I'll go back to the premise that I introduced at the beginning of this video, that the sensory receptors in your body report sensation, not pain. Remember, the sensory receptors in your body are there to collect data for you, not to decide for your nervous system how much pain it should report to your brain. Instead, the signals are sent to the nervous system, which unconsciously interprets the signals and decides what level of pain to report. That's how it works. Now suppose your subconscious nervous system diagnoses the situation correctly. In that case, it will motivate you to behave in a way that supports your wellness. By that, by supporting your wellness, what I mean is that all things considered, the pain level motivates you to do what is best for you. And that brings me to the other point that I'd like to make, that the function of pain, this is evolutionary development of pain signals, is to motivate you away from harm and towards safety. Essentially, the goal of your pain system is to keep you from a debilitating injury or death and to move you towards what's best for you. Let's look at what happens to this unconscious sensory system when it works as designed. Imagine you accidentally put your hand on a stove. Your hand automatically moves away, right? Like this. This automatic response is subconscious. You're not thinking about it. It's just reflexive. In this case, your subconscious system is working well. Here's another example. If you have a flu from a virus, what motivation from your nervous system is to stay still. The motivation to stay still comes from symptoms like Fatigue, you know, you're like, oh my goodness, achy muscles and headaches. Ugh. In this case, conserving energy supports your health because it lets your body use these energetic resources that would otherwise be used on something less important to fight invaders. Remember, the goal of this unconscious sensory system is to keep you from injury and death and move you towards safety. Now let's look at what happens to the sensory system when it's dysfunctional. The source of dysfunction in this system can come from nerves compromised by poor nutrition, lack of oxygen, toxins, physical damage, or malfunction in the system that interprets the data. In this video, we will focus on the malfunction of the system that interprets the data. In future videos, I'll explore how our nervous system can be compromised by things like viral infections, poor nutrition, and toxins. If you're suffering for a long time, and have seen many practitioners with no lasting results, it's very likely that your interpretive system is what needs adjusting. When your unconscious sensory system malfunctions, it can over-report or under-report pain. 
A malfunctioning sensory system can cause you to respond in ways that make your pain condition worse. This combination of problems is what clinically is called nervous system dysregulation. An example of nervous system dysregulation is a chronic condition like fibromyalgia. And in this case, the pain often feels random and exaggerated in regards to what's going on. So something as simple as stubbing a toe or being exposed to bright lights or you know, encountering a rude person uh, can trigger a cascade of pain that doesn't help. It just floods and overwhelms the person. So likewise, suppose you feel less pain than is helpful. In that case, you might not notice the warning signs of injury and might end up getting seriously hurt instead of being able to avoid it. And for example, if you're stressed and burnt out with your job, so you know that's a good example, but you ignore it and you just push forward, you know, American style, harder, 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 and then you can trigger a stroke, a heart attack, or even something like cancer. Also remember that the subconscious system can over-respond or under-respond to pathogens like viruses and bacteria. A dysfunction like this is the basis of autoimmune disease. So essentially, when you have autoimmune disease, your body is overprotective. It's like this hypervigilant soldier in your ranks or group of soldiers, and what they do is they, they attack everything, including you. So they may attack the virus, but they also attack your body tissue as well. So therefore, it's hurting you rather than protecting you. And when the immune system is under-responsive, it will fail to protect you when the body's invaded by a virus or bacteria. And what I'm kind of putting forward here is the new model of the nervous system offers a more coherent explanation and more options for relieving chronic conditions. If we can explain these chronic conditions in the way I just did, it helps us understand how we might help. And this new paradigm helps you readjust your unconscious system to support you instead of work against your health. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. You can look forward to more videos that teach you how to get out of chronic pain and illness and optimize your health with the insights of modern neuroscience as your guide.